amazing. It's amazing. The Michael Deacon program. 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 Is the embassy? Is the embassy? Is the embassy? Is the embassy? How's it going, Marshall? Hey, it's going good, Michael. How about with you? I'm doing great. I'm glad you asked, Marshall. I'm doing very, very good. It's nice out here in the desert. About 80 degrees, finally, out here. Whoa. That's Where? pretty warm. I'm, I'm actually back in El Centro now. Oh, well, El Centro, yeah. That, that would be 80 degrees. That's, that's pleasant weather in El Centro. It is, actually. You like that hot, dry heat, don't you? Oof, it's terrible. I had to come back out here to, with the parents, but soon enough I'll go back to the beach where I belong, Marshall. Oh, there you go. You know, I was talking, I grew up in Phoenix, Arizona. I was talking to somebody from Phoenix yesterday. I said, there's only one way you'd get me to move back to Phoenix, Arizona, is if I inherited a radiator shop. Because <laughs> that's a guaranteed living in Phoenix, you know. That's I mean, true. Bumper to bumper traffic at 120 degrees. Mm, yes, it's not ideal to be living out in the desert, by the way, folks. Nah, not at all. No. I grew up there. It was really nice. Not now. You know, with all the concrete, the asphalt. Yeah. But yeah, weather is changing. And I don't know about you. I've been following this flooding around the world. My, the intensity of it. And it just... It just doesn't seem the mainstream media is interested in covering it. Of course, they're never interested in anything we're interested no, in. No, not at all. You know, it goes that way. But <clears throat> most recently, I put up an article, and <clears throat> I have to be honest with you. Now, this is going into an election, and elections have this tendency to suck all the oxygen out of the room, right? They do. You know, so it's like, why publish anything? You know, who's reading? They're all, you know, they want to say, and it's like, who can blame them? I'm looking to see what's happening with the election. You know, this is already a dumpster fire. And you know, where's this going to go? How this is all going to, how big is the cheat going to be? Uh, it's, it's, it's miserable to think about it, but. The key thing is, you know, I voted early. Did you vote early? I voted early, yes. Good for you. And to all your listeners out there, if you haven't voted already, kindly get up off your lazy couch potato ass and do it. <laughs> yes, it's true. <laughs> you know, I've you know, enough of this humble asking stuff. It's like in your face, you know. Nowadays get you have to. Here. Now nowadays you have to be in their face. Uh-huh. And uh yeah 
because if they're able to steal another election, the penalty is going to be counted in billions of lives. And that's, you know, people really don't understand that about this election. And uh, they get into all this touchy feeling. Well, Trump says things that bruise my, you know, ego. Yeah, he's a tough ass, you know, <laughs> he grinds, but he's our tough ass and he gets the job done. We know where we stand. And the thing is, we're going to stand much better with Trump in surviving what's coming. Even if the only thing Trump does is to stop the governments from the of the world from killing us. This is population reduction. It's eugenics. And it really just, I look at this and other people are in awareness. And you could just see it when you're looking at the Anons and the influencers and the Q community. This frustration that people just are clueless. They're not seeing it. And the same thing is people, Nemesis is appearing in the sky all the time now. And the reason why it's not on mainstream media is suppression. I'm following it on our channel. I have on a Telegram channel, uh, Yowza Chat, and we're tracking you know, all these observations that are coming in from all over the world, you know, from 2023, 2024, uh, people are always saying, I'd like to have provenance, date, name, location, all these things. <laughs> me too, me too. But you know, the crumbs fall off the table. And you got to take what you take before the big mothering globalist rumba comes and sweeps it away. And that's the way it works. So you got to beat the rumba to get your uh, to get your intelligence. Still the same. Uh, and as I pointed out in one of my articles, if a fourth of the observations that are being reported now were being reported 10 years ago, social media would it be on fire. It would be everywhere. And yet it's not because I see the methodical suppression. Go on Google, you type Planet X, what do you get? Planet 9. And Marshall, let me just ask you really quickly, why do you think that is, by the way? The suppression. The, well, the suppression is they know that people who've been following the topic for some time some of them will just walk away from it, all right? They just don't want to think about it anymore. And that's fine. Let them go do it. Uh, it's not a happy place to be because, you know, once you know what is, is, <laughs> you can't walk away from it. You, know, you can try, but it'll boomerang on you. And um, we just... People, the main thing about it is people need to look up more often. If they would, we would have a lot more observations, but the suppression would still be the same. A, a video observation now goes up on YouTube, and not very often. We don't see as many on YouTube. We see them more elsewhere. Facebook, uh, TikTok, so forth, X. Um, YouTube has methodically suppressed it. Uh, I can remember 10 years ago when we would put up any kind of thing, uh, the videos would get thousands of views. Really quickly, by the way, mind Very you. Quickly. Yeah, I remember. Now, if it, it, it takes a month for them to get a hundred to get anywhere really yeah to get anywhere i mean because the suppression and it's like i think perhaps that there's more people clicking into them than you see in the accounts but the, i mean we know they're they're rigging the accounts they got their thumb on the scale all the time so this is part of the suppression the goal that they're doing is 
the old hands like you and other folks and your audience, all right, you're all old hands, been there, done it, seen it. They're not going to convince you to walk away. What they're doing is they're trying to get rid of the newbies, the people that are coming into awareness and starting to explore the topic. So you look at their tactics, what the first thing that they're doing is taking them in a different direction. It's misdirection is the big thing that they're doing. So Google, you go into Google and what is, you type Planet X, they start feeding you Planet Nine. They start feeding you all kinds of sites that are saying it's a ridiculous conspiracy or a village idiot. Uh, it's all negative spin. And, you know, people that should be getting high stats, all right, are not getting the high stats. And what you have are the government disinformation operatives and their sites. They're getting all the traffic. So everything's manipulated. And what that's doing is it's weaning out the newbies. And that's unfortunate because... Coming into awareness about Planet X, you know, especially for people who've been in it for a long time. And it's easy to forget what it was like for you in the beginning, because for, for most of you, that was years ago. I mean, for many of you, it was in your childhood. It really was, actually. All right. Dreams, visions, premonitions. You have knowings of things. Uh, it comes to you. All right. And then people start to look, you know, they have these dreams, visions, and premonitions, and they're trying to understand it. And then the minute they go on Google, what does Google do? Shit can the whole thing, you know, just turn it into a dumpster fire of disinformation, spin, Planet Nine. Planet Nine, by the way, is a psyop. That's all it is. It's a psyop. It does not enjoy the popular support of the astronomy community. It's Planet Nine in the astronomy community internationally is like getting Beyonce <laughs> to draw a crowd so Kamala can walk in there and feel big. All right. And everybody knows it's BS. And if, you know, and the last time she did, Beyonce didn't perform. She lost her audience. They walked out on her right there and then. Oh, gee, excuse me while I shed a single tear. <laughs> and <laughs> so that's uh, the problem is, is that the newbies are going to come into awareness about the time they should have, you know, by the time they come into awareness, because they're all holding off, nobody wants to be, because they all watched people like you and I being called the village idiots, right, for this. And so they don't want to be called village idiots, and so they stayed away from it. But it's in the sky. It's in the sky. It's a big mother hummer, and by the and and in a, a period of months, not years, a period of months, it will become the largest object in the sky. Because right now, Nemesis, as we're uh, documenting in our sign series, is in its point of perihelion. This is the part of its thirty-six hundred year orbit where it comes closest to our sun. Once it completes this, it, it takes, you know, it, it's a matter of a few months to go through the perihelion phase where it is really picking up speed. Oh, man, it's screaming right now. And uh, what we're expecting to see uh, is, uh, and I'd say within easily with the next 30 days that we'll finally have the evidence to you know say excuse me it's it's clear that nemesis has entered its aphelion phase the aphelion phase is very long you got two long legs at perihelion coming towards the sun aphelion going to the furthest point away from the sun and now that it's in 
that phase where it's heading south is where it becomes really dangerous for us in aphelion leg, and we call it the danger zone. We're going to, we will be within, within a month of Nemesis being clearly in the danger zone. And there we have a buffer of about uh, approximately two years to prepare. After that, it's all going to get crazy because it'll be in the sky. Things are going to be happening. Supply chains are going to be disrupted. Getting stuff, it, it's really going to be difficult. And this is, so we've been set up to fail because what people need to understand is that our government has known about Nemesis this dwarfs, uh, brown dwarf star in orbit around our sun with its own planets and moons. They knew it was out there with the pioneer probes in the 70s. They were looking for magnetic evidence and they found it. That was the reason why they sent out IRAS. All right, IRAS was a space-based observatory at work in the infrared and and the reason why they needed to do infrared that way was so that uh, a brown dwarf star at that distance, it's not observable in visible light. It's not going to be observable in fizzle, visible light until it's up in the northern skies where we see it. You know, obvious, uh, we only have a span, I would say, from uh, beginning to end of maybe 30 years of it being, at most, of it being observable. If we go all the way back to uh, when I first saw Nibiru, 2012, and then the pole shift to be 2013, and then, you know, it could be we're still watching it as it's descending down into the southern skies. Now, could, you know, think about it. You're talking about 20 to 30 years out of a 3,600-year orbit, right? during which it's not visible in the eye light that our eyes needs. It is now, and boy, are we seeing it, and it will be just, and in time, Nemesis is going to be the largest object in the sky, bigger than the sun, all right? So it's you can't be walking around going oh, 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 oh okay <laughs> right all right and even then if if the globalists are in charge what are we going to see with CNN MSNBC ABC the fake news they're going to be saying oh worry it's just an interesting sky show yeah enjoy the lights it's gonna hurt words. us enjoy it it's colorful you know will everybody will and then you know they'll have a don't look up campaign and all kinds of things and by the time things really start getting nasty and getting people's attention it's it's over. It's too You're late. Not going to have, it's too late. There, it'll be catch as catch can. Wow. Um, and here's the sad thing about it. You know, with the Pioneer probes, they knew something was out there. With IRAS in 1983, they imaged it. And uh, what they did, and I learned this uh, from two whistleblowers who were military intelligence, one in the U.S. and one was at NATO headquarters, and uh, they both read the same jacket. They didn't know each other, but in the course of their jobs, they knew this. They read, read the jacket. I see. And uh, these were the guys that worked inside the, the, the secrets vaults. They had the keys to the kingdom. They could see everything. And they weren't that busy. And so they literally would just start pulling out file folders and reading them. In, in their free time. And it blew their minds, the kind of things that they were finding. And so what happened with the IRAS was once NASA 
imaged it. They got it in infrared, and woohoo, boy, it stood out like a sore thumb. Uh, the first thing NASA did was they shut down the data feed so all the image wouldn't come in. What they told their stakeholder partners in the project was that the uh, cooling system for the onboard infrared camera had failed. Uh, it may sound odd, you have to have cooling for the camera because even though space is very cold, the camera has to be colder than the space around it so that it can image the infrared. And uh, they, what they did was they just changed the encryption codes on the data imaging download stream so no one could do it. So they, they knew the data was coming and they just said ignored its corrupt data. Uh, it wasn't, it was very good data and they used all of the remaining hydrogen fuel on board the spacecraft to keep it pointed as long as they could at Nemesis to make as any observations as they could for an ephemeris so they would know where it's going to be, when it's going to be. They knew that in 1983. You know how we know that? Because you use Google Sky. Everybody thinks Google Sky, when you're on Google Sky, you're seeing the universe as it is in this in this instant because Google in its wisdom has a gazillion webcam cameras pointing at everything in the universe. Wakey, wakey people. <laughs> you know, <laughs> if you go to the legend at the very bottom, it'll say 1983 Sky Survey. All right. What you're and and when you're looking, all right, on Google Sky, you go into the southern skies where they found Nemesis, and guess what you find? Missing panels. <laughs> so it's all been contrived, and for one reason, to set us up to fail. Now, what does this mean to us that they didn't tell us about IRS? And they've been tracking this all the time. What does it mean? What it means is our governments have with malice and forethought withheld this existential survival knowledge for over half a century half a century and they say oh it just happened yesterday you know where i learned about nemesis in high school from my science teacher and i'm not the only one i talk to people all the time my age that say that because it was the fact that we were in a binary star system everybody was talking about it it was the talk of the day it was amazing and then in the then all of a sudden boom in the 70s, it started with the shutdown, and the government started clamping down. So we have a government that denied us a half of a century to prepare for this. And the measure of that crime will not be in the millions of people who die, but in the billions. And that is the simple truth of it. So now, you know, you have a lot of people uh, that are, you know, it depends. People come into awareness at different stages. And unfortunately, you know, if you look at just our political, okay, I mean, Planet X requires critical thinking. You have to be a critical thinker to follow this topic and understand it, research it, what's going on. Critical thinking is not something we do very well these days. Uh, about 20 to 25% of the population are critical thinkers, and the rest, what? Normies. No critical thinking, they're all emotional. Slightly autistic, yes. 
Yeah. To be I mean, honest with you, no, no pun. I mean, yeah. no, no. no uh, I think you're right. I think you're right. No disrespect, it's, but yes. Right. And and the thing of it is, is I feel sorry for these people. I, I'm not angry with them. Just because they're being foolish. All right. You can vote for whoever. You can believe what it, but it, critical thinking must transcend everything or you're lost. A good example of this is survival experts will tell you that it doesn't matter what's in your backpack. The three things that are going to determine if you survive is, can you assess your situation, B, formulate a plan, and C, take action on that plan, even if you know it's not the best, all right? And those are the three things that save you. So you can have all kinds of goodies, but if you freak out, you freak out. It's reason why when people drive their cars off bridges into waters, you know, and uh, they they find the vehicles and you know bring them up and to claim the body and whatever, and they you you ask them and they'll tell you quite often they will find where the people have literally ripped off their fingernails trying to claw their way through the roof of the car. They don't know that even if you have an electric window, it'll still continue to work for a few minutes so you can get your windows down. There's, there's ways that you can survive in these situations, but they don't. They just freak out, and uh, in, in hysterical panic, they try and claw their way out of the car. And when we're looking at what's coming, that's not going to, you know, clawing your way out of the car is not going to be the right response. And at this point, it's... It's not even so much as to what you have prepared. Everyone's going to have to go underground for this, all right? And that's the reason why I wrote my book, Win-Win Survival Handbook, All Hazard Safety and Future Space Colonization, because it is about building below-ground communities. You don't have to go deep below ground. Five feet of earth cover is enough, uh, and it varies in my designs between five and 14 feet. And you're doing concrete domes, which are easy to build. We're not talking about really complex structures and complex, uh, you know, uh, manufacturing to support it. Right. But we've talked about underground bunkers before. We talked about the more luxurious uh, models, though, Marshall. Yeah, well, with a win-win, actually, what I'm saying is that you don't treat it. See, the thing is, the difference between the win-win survival handbook and all these other, the everybody's big, yeah. talking about, here, build a concrete box in the ground, and you're going to live there for three years. Right. It's like, can you imagine, you know, you're telling the family, hey, we're all going to get down <laughs> into this wet, miserable, cold concrete box in the ground. Hey, kids, we're going to have fun, fun, Yeah, fun. it's like you a know? camping trip. Right, you know, and then you wonder why they're all hiding behind the piano. <laughs> and um, what I'm saying in this is that the basic thing that everybody does, they're always plan B thinking, plan B thinking. I'll create it over there because I'm making all my money here in plan A and my life is here and this is here and that is there, but this is ground zero. You know, when the shit happens, it's going to hit here. And so I'm going to be able to get out of here to my plan B secreted little box in the ground before you know, the guacamole hits the fan, which is really naive. Park, you know, freeways will turn into parking lots, and it's like, I'm not worried. I got a, I got a Cessna caravan. I'll fly there. Really? What happens? What are you going to do when the FAA grounds all air traffic? Right. You're going to go sneak up there and hope that an F-16 doesn't put a missile up your ass? All right. <laughs> <laughs> um 
because it will be martial law at that point. And people do it. The way to survive this is people have to have a, have a lifestyle. And it has to be a good, good lifestyle. Life-affirming, inspiring, hopeful. And so what I, you know, the concrete domes create the most spacious, comfortable habitats underground. And because the dome is the single load-bearing thing, you, you can make the interiors anything you want to do. Pirates of the Caribbean, if that floats your boat, all right? And you make everything beautiful. And when you're in... Uh, something like that. It doesn't matter what the temperature is above ground, hot, cold, whatever, you're 50 degrees. Right. And, and Marshall, let me just add really quickly here to, I guess, the reality of this sort of situation. Given the fact that what we saw recently on, on television, it was plastered all over the place about the hurricanes, mm -hmm. it, it reminded me that America and their recent experiences with the hurricanes, they highlighted a troubling reality that the nation is not at all prepared for a major disaster. It's not. I mean, what happened in North Carolina, what happened in Maui? Yeah, that too. Oh, my God, there was a crime against humanity. So North even despite North advancements in technology, Marshall, we are yeah. still not ready. We are still not. Actually, we are absolutely prevented from being ready. And what's going to be critical to the success of these underground uh, survival is going to be power. And mm, right. one of the things I'm finding on social media is there are guys that are taking basic equipment and creating power generators. And they can scale them to size. Uh, you can have them enough, big enough to power a house uh, or big enough to power a small number of houses, a little community. And you could have numbers of those, and they just run continuously. You don't require fuel. So you know, with Nasara Jasara, with the globalists going out of power, we're going to have tons of patents and technologies that are going to come out, which are going to be essential for this. My hope is that there's a convergence, that the people are waking up enough that they go to the government and say, we need to mobilize. We need to, you know, and we can do this. You know, if I'm saying we've got about two years realistically before the, you know. Before the before shit hits the fan. Yeah. And, Mod uh, on. and it's going to be hitting the fan then. But, I mean, it's two years, and then we're just not going to be able to do these things. Right. Uh, or do them, it's going to be much more spotty. But, you know, <clears throat> I wrote all of the books I, I publish, all right? Win-Win Survival, Revelation, Planet X, Survival, right. Planet X, Tribulation. I wrote all of my books, Radio Free Earth, with one year in mind, 2025, because that's the year that people are going to start waking up knowing that they need to prepare, and all of my books talk to that time. And, you know, the smart thing to do as a publisher don't write beyond your audience. So if your audience wants all kind of scandal and intrigue and interesting stuff, give them that. All right, give them what they're going to want to buy. Uh, that wasn't my motive. My motive was in 2025 when everyone's pointing up at the sky and collectively pooping their pants, give them the tools that they need to quickly organize. And the country can do it. In 1941, all right, um, imagine you wrote a book titled How to Win a World War in Two Theaters, and you published it on November 1st, 1941. How many advanced copies do you think you'd sell? On the other hand, publish that book on January 1st, 1942, how many people are going to want to buy winning a global war in two theaters? It's timing, all right? 
And that's the way it is. And when you look at what America did in 1942, was a massive rework of our industrial base. And companies that were making pots, pans, refrigerators, and whatever, now they're making machine guns and ball turrets, or whatever is needed for, and it was a massive conversion. And wars, you know, battles are won in the field. Right. Wars are won in the factory. You got to have, we won the war because we flooded the world with tanks, airplanes, guns, all the technology to fight it, as vast quantities of things. And uh, we could do that again, which is, you know, it's really my hope that we do it. And I, it's possible with Trump because I see Trump dropping Planet X comms. And that kind of, you know, flips people like, what? First off, anybody that's got two shekels to rub together knows about Planet X. Oy vey. Okay? Now, the rich guys, they know. They know. And if you hear a rich guy who is telling you, oh, it's all conspiracy theory, I don't need to prepare for any of that, be sure you're not standing directly in front of him, <laughs> otherwise you will be impaled in his nose. That's right. You know, he's going to go poke, you know, <laughs> that's it. Pinocchio, it's going to be the Pinocchio thing. And uh, because I worked with wealthy people in the lead up to 2012 doing bunkers, and I thought they were really s superb. They were excellent. But now what I think is we need to organize around churches for this. Because particularly independent churches, uh, the large, uh, you know, org the bureaucracies, all right, the mainstream big churches that are run from the top down, they're not going to do so well. You know, it is a matter of survival of the fittest. And a lot of people, when they use that term, mistakenly think that it means the people who are the most athletic are going to survive. No, most, mostly the most wealthiest will survive, by the way, because this is actually a very expensive endeavor. You know, you have to consider radiation protection and supplies. Well, yeah, if you know what you're doing and you got friends, you can do a hell of a lot with some shovels. But let's remember and keep in mind, though, Marshall, there are those out there that have none of these avenues available for them. You can you afford a shovel? I can, but not together some with people can't. Together though. people that have got a shovel, and I can tell you how. That's you read true. My book Win Win, and I tell you if you're with twenty other people, how to build a shelter to survive all of this. Just go get bags and bags. You know, you're gonna have to get concrete and gravel, and right. you know, basic raw materials. All right, and uh, you can do it. People can do it. Everyone always, you know, it's like, oh, it costs money and the eyes roll up. I Yeah, right. I know. You know? Absolutely. I, I see that all the time. You know, now for the people who are wealthy that I worked with, for them, they weren't the lunchbox Joe, the average person. Yeah. You know, they're worried about, oh, I don't want to be a village idiot. <laughs> I don't want to be a village idiot. Yeah. And so I'm going to do nothing. That's the safe thing to do. Really? You know, it it, remi it reminds me of people that are, you know, like the damsel in distress, Dudley, you know, the, you know, sinister right. guy has tied her to the rail line. <laughs> and, uh, the train's coming. Yeah. Uh, she's going, no, it won't hit me. You know, thump, thump. And uh, people do that. They're, they're you know, they just go into denial. Denial is going to be the biggest killer. And Marshall, let me ask you this, though. What do you think is more likely, a nuclear sort of attack or maybe something else? Um, maybe an asteroid or just the nemesis uh, coming down? Well, I, I would see 
I think my greatest concern would be a natural event right now. Okay. I'm thinking nuclear. We are, we are, and I am following as a Planet X researcher the political situation because right. the two are inextricable. And what, what most people just don't understand is what is driving the timeline? It's Planet X. It's not election dates. It's Planet X. It's driving the timeline. You know, in 2020, on July 4th, when Trump was giving that amazing speech in South Dakota, all right, and with the presidents behind him, White Hats leaked a Soho image of Nemesis after it just crossed the ecliptic. Uh, I, I saw it, and it was, it was the money shot I had been waiting for my life, you know? Right. It was, it was smoking you. proof evidence. You know, the guy that put it up just said, you know, Jay, I don't know what the heck this is. Tell me in the comments. You know, it's like, no, I know you're going to start with you. And I analyzed it. It was a phenomenal image. It showed everything. And it was the only way it could get out was White Hats leaked it. And it was, I could just see how they did it, who they did it through. Because trust me, at NASA, there's a two-to-one ratio. For every scientist, there's two spooks, okay? <laughs> Everything is, you know, they're tightly controlled. Everything comes out, has to be approved, and there's narrative and there's dialogue. None of this, you know... Science is open and wonderful stuff. I mean, no, nah, not with NASA. Never a straight answer. And I, I'm disgusted with NASA because they've known where Nemesis is for 50 years and they have withheld this knowledge through one administration after another. Yeah, they've been hiding They're a lot. The earth. They're the scum of the earth. Right. They set billions of people up to die. Because you know, be, they did it, and now the fake news is doing it. And what do we have? We have all of these people who are not critical thinkers, and they're buying into this. They're the say, you know, I hate to say it, but they're the ones that were rolling up their sleeve and saying, yeah, put it in me, put it <laughs> in me. I don't know what the hell it is, but put it in me. And that's not working out so good right now. Right. Right. And what I see is survival of the fittest as it was in the Darwinian sense. Survival of the fittest comes out of Darwinism or uniformitarianism. And what survival of the fittest is talking about are species that are fit. And species fitness is determined by three things. Number one, Procreation, all right? Uh, we're not doing so good there. Men, you know, most women don't like most men. They're not procreating. Yeah. Population is coming from illegals. Uh, no, that's not a good sign. So we're failing in that first measure of fitness. What's the second measure of fitness? Is that you must survive. You must be a survivor. You know, survival is not Amazon Prime delivered free, <laughs> right. free you know, Amazon free week returns, right? You know, and get it with a bow tie, and, and you know, whatever you want to do. All right. So, when it comes to just flat out survival, again, we're not doing. We're not ready for that. Just like the disaster that went on here and. Uh, America, again, not ready for this sort of thing. And Marshall, I got to be honest with you. My biggest fear is nuclear fallout. I definitely think nuclear weapons will be used. And one of the reasons why the U.S. government bought, get this, $290 million worth of a drug, an anti-radiation drug, end plate, by the way. And this was way back in 2022. Our government always seems to have uh, foretold knowledge somehow. Yeah, but look what they buy in advance. They're buying all of this. They're buying ammunition and guns. I mean, I, 
why is it IRS agents need AR-15s, you know, the assault rifles and millions of rounds of ammunition? All right. I mean, even NOAA, weather forecasters pack in steel. I mean, give me a break. Our government, FEMA camps, you know, uh, <laughs> got all kinds of stuff. Guillotines. All right, we have thousands and thousands of guillotines. And all of, you know, thanks to Obama, everything our government has done is about killing us. It's about killing us. It hasn't, it could have used all of that in much wonderful ways for public education, to build shelters. I can tell you other nations have done an excellent job of building shelters for their populations. And believe it or not, Russia is right at the top of the list. Sweden has enough underground shelter for all of its native-born citizens. All right? Not the foreigners, but the native-born citizens. So what do we got? We got guillotines, guns, bullets. All right? What do you mean guillotines, uh, Marshall? I'm not sure i'm familiar with uh, Obama, the story Obama bought guillotines the guillotines were are to be used to kill maga how do you think they're going to execute everybody that they arrest i did not hear about this um marshall maybe i, I just wasn't I, maybe I, I didn't read that wow i didn't know that it's in my videos it's in my work no I've been kidding on this yeah oh wow yeah thousands of guillotines okay and because the guillotine is just the cheapest, fastest way to terminate a life. And on top of that, you don't have to use drugs so you can harvest the internal organs with a guillotine, which is another huge advantage. So they take your head off, flip you over, gut you like a fish, take whatever they need. Wow. All right. So dark. It's very, very dark. Oh, yeah. Oh, this stuff is very, very dark. And... <clears throat> well, that's a good segue, by the way, uh, Marshall, for the article. Yeah, let's talk about this because yeah. I'm starting to pick on, you know, uh, I was going, yeah, I want to write an article, but everybody's watching the news. The election, yeah, and right? the election, right. And, and you can't blame I'm doing it too, okay? So... I just was like, okay, let's just have fun. Let's pick on somebody. And I was thinking about that divine appointment. I get a phone call from a guy who's been following me for 10 years, a truck driver out of Idaho. And uh, the uh, he was really frustrated because he's trying to go to his, his elders in the Mormon church, and they're just think he's a village idiot all right and he said it's right in our book of mormon and they won't read it and he's trying to read it to him so uh, i'm going to read this passage that he sent me please do yes all right and i'm just going to read from this article it says, during this time the nemesis mini constellation is about to cross the ecliptic in the plane of our solar system in its aphelion phase it is. It plunges into our southern skies. Mass of interactions between Nemesis, its planet, and the sun will be harsh for us here on Earth. So, this is from the Book of Mormon, the Helaman 14. Starts at uh, 20. But behold, as I said unto you concerning another sign, a sign of his death, behold, in that day that he shall suffer death, the sun shall be darkened and refuse to give his light unto you, and also the moon and the stars, and there shall be no light upon the face of this land, even from the time that he shall suffer death for the space of three days to the time that he shall rise again from the dead." Now, that's the crucifixion, but what I find often with prophets is you have to understand they're seeing real things, but they're in a quantum field. It's, it's not three dimension. It's dimensions upon dimensions. 
and what they're seeing, and they're trying to do it. And I see them talking about the same things from you know, many different walks of life and different faiths. And here in 22, it, uh, in 21, it picks up. And he goes, yea, at that time he shall yield up the ghost. There shall be thunderings and lightnings for the space of many hours, and the earth shall shake and tremble. And the rocks which are upon the face of this earth, which are both above the earth, and beneath, which we know at this time are solid, or the more part of it, if is one is solid, shall be broken up. Yea, they shall be rent in twain, and shall ever after be found in seams and cracks and in broken fragments upon the face of the whole earth. Yea, both above the earth and beneath. And behold, there, and behold, there shall be great tempests, and there shall be many mountains laid low, like unto a valley, and there shall be many places which are now called valleys, which shall become mountains whose height is great. And many highways shall be broken up, and many cities shall become desolate. And many graves shall be opened, and shall yield up many of their dead, and many saints shall appear unto many." And behold, thus the angel spoke unto me, for he said that there should be thunderings and lightning for the space of many hours. And he said unto me that while the thunder and the lightning lasted and the tempest that these things would be and that darkness should cover the face of the whole earth for the space of three days. All right. Now, what I'm seeing there, Michael, when I read it, and this is the part of prophecy that's that's difficult for people, because you have Mormon prophets, Catholic prophets, Christian prophets, Jewish prophets, right. prophets, and you know, and then you have secular prophets like Nostradamus and such. Um, these people were all looking forward in time, space, and seeing the future. Think about a trial, a criminal trial, and you have, say, 10 witnesses to an event. And all 10 witnesses are questioned on the stand. What does everyone expect? All 10 are going to have a slightly different version of the story. They're going to see different things. Different right, yeah. And if all of them are saying exactly the same thing, that would actually be suspicious. Because that would be contrary to human nature and would indicate that there's been coordination and collusion, all right? Well, you have people who have had, and you know, from multiple generations across a span of thousands of years, you have people who have had the psychic experience, a very profound, a very disturbing, of looking into the future and, when you read them, they're all looking at the same point in time. They're looking at the same events, but describing them differently because they're seeing different things when they're witnessing these future events. And so that's the reason why you're trying to reconcile mm. prophecy A with prophecy B. Right, okay. Is absurd. It's a fool's errand because language is two-dimensional. Think of uh, when we think, we think in terms of lists, right? A, B, C, D, I'm boss, you're employee. So everything is rank and order, has to be organized. Everything is in, we think in lists. We're list thinkers. We're two-dimensional. This is the reason why it's so easy for the globalists, the Satanists, to manipulate us. Because the, what they use is the precision of language. You know, a good example, flying saucers became UFOs, and now the latest is their UA, UAPs, right? Right, yeah, UAPs. That's the precision of language. Change the definition. And, and, and we've seen a lot of that in the later years of our lives. That. That's right. Oh, yeah. 
And so you can't reconcile, all right? When you are a psychic, all right, and, and here, I mean, my books, I, I am a psychic. I use my talent for research. You know, it's, that's what I'm doing. I'm writing the book, and, and I'm working with the guides, and I'm saying, okay, I have to solve this problem, this problem, this problem, and they help me, and they lay it out. So all your right? dreams, I take it, are very uh, vivid and, of course, it's almost like you're having a premonitions, I would have to imagine. Well, I have waking visions, and then I, there's times I just channel. I talk to them. You can, everybody can talk to them, all right? You can talk, uh, you know, as a... Uh, you can talk... Sure. People talk all the time. They say they're talking with God. They talk with Yeshua, all right? I have no reason to doubt that. And... We just don't understand. We have so much more ability than we think we have because we've been dumbed down. We're numbed. We've been numbed. You know, you go to the dentist and they, you know, jab all that Novocaine up into your gums so that it'll be numb, you know, and he can drill away, right? Without you flying out of the chair and beating them to a pulp. That's right. And, you know, so it, it works out that well. Um, what folks need to understand is that prophecies, and I'm seeing convergence of prophecies. I'm seeing people who have had psychic experience, and my heart goes out to the people that do this. All right. I don't, you know, for me, it's not about we got the right guy, you got the wrong guy, we're the good religion, you're idiots, you know, this kind of stuff, that, and that's what we do. Right, and by the way, it's interesting that you brought up uh, this uh, Mormon and, of course, the Three Days of Darkness, which I've been knowing about since uh, the early 90s, thanks to Father Malachi Marin appearing with Art Bell all those years ago. All right. I I'll get into that in a second, but uh, on a quick note, the Mormons, they have some very peculiar beliefs, uh, especially when it comes to heaven. They also have three levels of heaven, a celestial kingdom, a terrestrial kingdom, and a telestial kingdom, which is, I guess, the, the lowest part of heaven. Very interesting beliefs, in my opinion, uh, Marshall. Do you, do you subscribe to uh, some of these beliefs? Uh, no, I'm a go it alone guy. You're going it alone, okay? Great relationship with the Creator, right? And um, I'm on that boat too. I have to say, I, you know, I I just um, I don't want any middlemen. I, yes, I agree. Me and my relationship with Creator. So you you're basically you don't identify as a Mormon, a Christian, a Catholic, none of those uh, sort of things. No, I call myself a perpetual. Um, ah, okay, I believe okay. I call perpetual genesis. I get you. Which is the perpetual creation of life from the lifelessness of the void. I had a feeling you're going to say that, yes. That's right. Everybody yes. has a mission. Creator has a mission. Creator wants more of us and more evolved. All right. And that is perpetual genesis. It is the perpetual creation of life from the lifelessness of the void. That it's no, you know, it's like, where's all the energy going to come from? <laughs> Whatever you need, it's there. It's all in the dark matter of the void, which is endless and is much bigger than, you know, it's, well, there's no limit to it. Creation exists within the void and it's filling more and more of it and it's converting the yeah. dark energy and dark mass. And, you know, that is through intention. And this, so literally, when God says, let there be light, that's exactly how it works. It's intention. All right? That's the powerful thing. And we have the power of intention. We can manifest things. And uh, the hope is that we will learn and use these skills in time to save ourselves, to help ourselves. By the way, Marshall, were you ever an atheist at any time? I think I flirted with agnosticism for a while. I was never an atheist. Yeah, I hear you. It tends to happen, though, when you get into uh, science and reading about uh, history and, and you go into all sorts of tangents. 
and you might end up being an atheist or agnostic after diving into some of these things. Or it could yeah. have the complete opposite effect on you. Yeah, well, it could. You know how you can spot a uh, dyslexic uh, atheist? <laughs> How's that? They'll tell you dog is dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a that's always a fun one. Yes. <laughs> and uh, so, no, I find it's it's much different. I see. Uh, and I see us in a time of evolution. Uh, there's going to be a lot of people that make the cut and a lot that don't. That don't, right. <laughs> All right. I have to agree. And, and I am seeing, you know, when I was talking about survival of the fittest, mm -hmm. and the third one is actually an adaptation. All right. So you got to appropriate, make more of yourself, okay? That's kind of hard when everybody it, don't it, It's what, As you just said, yes, it's very hard right now, especially with today's men and women. Uh, I can't blame entirely the men on these sort of things. It, it's also, it's a lot of things. It's, it's a multifaceted issue, really. But birth rates, as you said, have declined and so have relationships. We're pretty much becoming Japan number two in a few years here. Well, and here it's, it's, it's really awful. Uh, what we have is... You know, everybody is focusing, you know, you know, the men are like, this is our problem with the women. The women have, this is our problem with the men. You got to look beyond it. We're in a poisoned society. I agree. And the poison has three principal aims. One, divide the sexes. Two, destroy the family. Three, cripple the men. That is what we are doing in this country. And uh, our courts are doing a brilliant job of it. And there are a lot of women in social media going, where are the guys? And the guys aren't doing it because there's really, you know, there's, there's, you got to There's a war against men, by the way, Marshall. There, there's a war and it's return on investment. And for men... The risks of getting involved with a woman in America, a modern American woman, do not outweigh the benefits. There are no benefits. I was going to quickly ask you, is there a benefit for a man to get married, Marshall? Not in America. I, I have to be honest. Um, and, I agree, and you know what? I'm very happy and glad that you choose to be open with us uh, and give us this opinion because I think... I think that is the truth, uh, unfortunately, and I know a lot of people will be offended by that, and I offended a, a great number of, uh, of women my last show, Marshall. Mm -hmm. I, I said something I probably maybe shouldn't have said, and, uh, well, it was just my opinion, Marshall, and when it comes to election, I quickly stated that I, I don't believe that job would be fit for a woman. I believe that is a gender-specific role, and I know a lot of people won't like to hear that, but I definitely and firmly believe that a man needs to take that role. Well, what we have is a maternal society. And now. that's not PC, by the way. I, I lo you know, that's going to piss a lot of people off. Well, they don't want to hear it. I mean, because if the difference between conservatives and liberals is liberals are like Flash Gordon. <laughs> you know, right, they're right. in the future the way they want it. To, they're in a fantasy land, and they won't come out of it. And conservatives are critical thinkers. They're going, what are we going to do today? How is that going to outcome us tomorrow? All right. And I'm not interested in taking sides because I am seeing a natural process, the right. survival of the fittest. Correct. Again, let's go back to this. This is really important. I'm here to you. Okay, is it's procreation, all right? It is, you're not going to procreate when women start losing interest in their husbands and saying, you know, he's just another child I got to raise. Um, and then they get divorced, all right? And it's a disaster for the whole family. I see all of them as victims in that. And they're victims of this poisoned society that we have. Now, there are people who rise above the poison. And my advice to guys is, you know, first off, I, I, you're, you're probably going to do better going overseas to a country where family values 
are really uh, appreciated and the government supports those values or the people support their values. And because really what men want are traditional wives. All right. You're not going to have a traditional wife who doesn't trust you, doesn't think you're necessary and doesn't respect you. All right. Because she's caught up in some sort of socio-political drama. And it's unfortunate. And, you know, uh, and I will say, uh, when we're in the midst of things really bad, and they're going to be really bad, the bottom line is, you know, men are the ones that drive the trucks, clean the septic tanks, do all the dirty, hard, miserable jobs, fight the wars. Okay. And right now, uh, women have had a free ride because the courts have given them a tremendous amount of power. And this is not to take away from the women who have legitimate grievances, and uh, they've been they've they've been hurt in marriages. I just see a system that is poisoned and it's designed to bring out the worst in us and not the best. But I'm going to be very specific about what life is going to be like to survive Oy vey. when when society collapses. All right, this is gonna this is gonna be a collapse. Governments are are going to fail. They're going to have a hard time dealing with all of this, and it's gonna be catch as catch can. It'll be like Venezuela, and unfortunately, farming. I mean, it's going to be bad all over. And so for women today that oh, they hate men or they, you know, they're just negative on it or they're, they're not looking for a guy to build a life with. Can women that's ever be, uh, a uh, Marshall, let me ask you a very serious question. Do you think women can ever be happy? Well, you'd have to ask women. <laughs> you know, I've never I met a happy one, you, Marshall. <laughs> I, I know for a fact that they, uh, I, I have through science, great study and discipline over the years, I have determined the exact day, the exact day, the exact that day. men will understand women completely. Really? Yes, it'll be the day before the universe ends us. <laughs> We're slow. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Okay. So we just, you know, guys... You got to do your funny. thing and do it. But ladies, all of this hate, I'll tell you where it's going to get you. Unless you're some sort of Amazon who can armor up and do everything and dig trenches and whatever you're going to do. If you can't do what a man does, and you can't find a man that wants to put himself on the line for you, you're going to be left with only two major sources of protein bugs and semen i hate to say that it is a hard thing to say and it is brutal because i'm trying to wake you ladies up hate is not going to get you through this hate anger being unhappy all of this you're the one who's going to get hurt more about this not the men that you're ra raging and ranting They'll find women who are traditional and who do appreciate them. Right. And they'll have wonderful lifetime partnerships and they'll pull through this. But the people have been so busy pissing on each other, they're not going to have what's necessary to, to come together and work. They're, they're, it's, it'll all be self-defeating. And so all of this nonsense that's going on, you know, you know, to them, I just say, hey, lamb chops, you're having your fun. Okay, but everything has outcomes. I blame the internet partially, Marshall, for the way uh, some women become influenced by their friends. I mean, before social media, they weren't behaving as outrageous as they are today, men and women both. Uh, I yeah, think I think yeah. social media has uh, really driven that up. The fact that we're able to be so connected, and oftentimes, Marshall, I say this on the program, I miss the times when we weren't all so connected. That's right, and you know, one of the things in this modern philosophy, where men have been sold a line of bullshit, and they bought it, 
was that all you have to do is provide and protect, and that's it. It's a guy. You've done your job. And yeah. You'll have a happy wife. No. No. It doesn't work that way. No. Unfortunately. No, that doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. You know, if you don't have six million in the bank, six pack abs, and a six string guitar, you're you're in deep shit. You're in trouble. And that, these are things that they don't yeah. teach you in school, by the way. You actually have to uh, live life. And, uh, right. and go through that sort of thing. And then you quickly realize, oh, right. they're like this, huh? But w what I see right now is I see an emergence of beta males. Um, alpha males are the ones that, in a crisis situation, <laughs> glue yourself yeah, to good, the butt. Good of, luck. You know, get, get in the shadow of an alpha and stay with them. All right. Because he's going to go out and take this on. If he's a beta, he's weak. He's what we call snowflakes, you know. Oh, and they'll start crying. They get all emotional and they get all bent out of shape. Useless as tits on a board. <laughs> okay? And these men, so, you know, it's in the Colburn. It says, uh, you know, son, uh, fathers will no longer instruct their sons and they will become wayward. That was a sign of the times. And that's exactly what's happened. And so the, to the men... The, the message that's been confused that this whole thing is all you have to do is provide and protect. Well, you do. We, that's our natural role, to provide and protect. What feminism specifically and insidiously deleted was the third element, wisdom. As men, we have to, for our families, it is security. We must provide for them, but we must bring wisdom to the family. I grew up watching shows like Father Knows Best. There was a time when it was responsible for men to have that wisdom, to, to make the better decisions, to know, to watch out, all right? And so feminism literally crippled our ability to make functional families by taking that third element out, wisdom. And all that's left is, you know, the, you know, security and provide. Well, the man's not necessary because the government will provide the security and the government will make sure he's never able to have another family again providing you with the money. So the wisdom, once the wisdom is taken out, now men have gone wayward, men have becoming weak. All of this is happening. I see a natural process of selection, and it is going during what's coming, during what's coming. And even with Trump getting in, I see, I see Trump and the Patriots. They could, they could save people. Maybe we don't have as many that die, but it's still going to be in the billions. The question is: Is it two or three billion, or is it six? billion or more it's globalists that'll be six to seven billion even more than that probably down to a half a billion that's what their whole aim is that's the reason why the jab that's the reason why they withheld all the information about nemesis for a half a century it's to reduce our population all right and we've been withheld to, to come back from this, it is going to take the fittest amongst us, the ones who quit this political nonsense and idiocy and say, we have to procreate, we have to survive, we have to adapt. Those are the three things you have to be fit as a species, procreate, survive, adapt. And we're not adapting. We're not procreating. And we sure as hell are not surviving for the most part. So I know that there's a few of the people out there that understand this. You're already thinking it. You know it. You haven't said it because you're waiting for some idiot like me to be, an <laughs> idiot. <laughs> to be the village idiot. Okay. That's, hey, I, you know. I signed up fair for that. game fair game yes fair game all right and i'm glad to help you out
But I know there's folks, you know this, because I'm talking to you people. I'm talking to you. Yeah, and then I hear the rest, you know, and they're all about as dumb as a box of rocks. You know, saying, you know, I just want, it's, it's people that use contractions. Don't, won't, couldn't, shouldn't. Well, oh, watch out for people who use contractions. Those are losers looking for a nightmare to turn into another nightmare. And uh, avoid that. So people, I can't believe this wouldn't happen. This shouldn't be right. And so forth. Negative contraction after negative contraction. It's closed minds. I will tell you, the majority, even with Trump and the Patriots coming in, there's too much time lost. There's not enough that they can do. I see the trouble that they're having trying to wake up the public and get them into awareness. In fact, uh, you know, I saw one thing and it was on Nino's Corner and he was uh, with Juan O'Savin and I saw Juan starting to talk about earth changes mm. and he was talking about something that goes directly to what we're finding in our research. And he was trying to broach this topic because they're, they're saying, well, you know, it's likely a, some sort of natural event will disrupt uh, the election. They, they, they think it's a natural event or something we don't see, a, a black swan, right? And, and I've seen the White Hats... They're they're always out there and they're working their material and you think they're rambling, all right? They're not rambling. What they're doing is they're probing. They're looking for a way to explain something so that the audience can grab it, reach it, and process it. And I've seen them with trying to get the information out and it just falls flat you know people like go well what's that uh, maybe i don't want to step in it you know <laughs> and uh you know, so uh, it makes me doubtful that as I, and i there's no question in my mind you know they get into office that there's going to be a shift to start doing this and that we'll start seeing nemesis in the sky but people being what they are they're going it, it it takes time to come into awareness and to come into understanding about what's going to happen people always forget i say you know how many years did you study this before it finally clicked before you could start seeing it now take that whole experience and compress it into a matter of weeks or months for people who know more about denial, you know, than where the capital of their state is. And this is the problem. We, I, we're burning the candle at both ends and nobody even knows there's a damn candle. And that's the problem. And so easy, it's easy now to say things like, let's wait and see, I don't know about that, da, 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 da. No, it's coming. I see it. I'm seeing these observation videos coming in on my uh, Telegram channel. You go on my site, yowusa.com, and you'll see all my social media links in the left column. And I have a couple of Telegram work groups down there. And... Uh, <clears throat> There's the Yowza Observations is the one. And you'll see all of these uh, two Sun of the Sky observation videos that are floating in from all around the world. And people are talking in them and they're saying, I'm seeing this, man. What the hell's this stuff, man? This is some bad shit, you know? And they're really, they're seeing it and they're feeling it. And what's unquestionable for me is nemesis is showing up to more people all the time but how many pull out a smartphone and record it not as many as you'd think and so it's showing up we're not looking well 
I still I have people and they're sending me stuff and I'm going, yeah, you got it. And it's a, they'll have a picture of the sun and it's like fully zoomed out. So the sun is just tiny little thing. And then there's a little dot next to it. And they go, is that Nemesis? And I go, no, that's a little dot next to it. <laughs> yeah, there's no resolution. I can't tell you what it is. Zoom in on it. All right. Little things. Put in date time where you were but all of this is moot because as i said it's it's just a matter of months before you know, going into 2025 that nemesis will be a regular fixture in the sky what's amazing to us is the amount of time i can see it now i first saw nibiru which is the outermost planet of the nemesis mini constellation there are three major planets there's Helion, which is a gas giant, Arboda, a rocky planet, and Nibiru, a rocky planet. It's the outermost. Nibiru is, uh, is, it translates to the planet of crossing. And I saw Nibiru live through a uh, webcam, high-definition webcam, from Turrialba Volcano in Costa Rica, on December 26, 2012. And uh, this actually started before then. I had an expat who was living on the flanks of the Terrialba volcano. And he said, man, we, we got this thing popping up all the time. Every day. We're seeing it for about 15 minutes. And I, I tried a couple of times and I was just impatient. I didn't put enough effort into it. But the day after... Christmas, everything's quiet, you know. I'm sitting here eating my turkey and cranberry sandwiches. Love those. And, you know, I sat down and said, okay, I'm just going to sit here and watch this webcam. <clears throat> sure enough, Nibiru popped up for 15 minutes just before sunset. And uh, we put together, I put together a group of seven, uh, I think it was seven observers. And we were